Hi everyone, I'm JD from Willow Bound Journals. Welcome back to my channel and part two of this series where we make a book cover journal together. So we are up to the stage of making the, or preparing the pages <laughs> for this three signature journal. I'll link below the playlist um, if you want to catch up on the materials that we need and how I did the cover. And all of that info will be in those videos. But essentially here are all my pages that I might be using and I'll show you how I prepare them, cut them, fold them, all that kind of thing. I'm not sure if I'll be using them all, but at least I can have them all prepared. I actually pre-prepared this one earlier. It's just a doily that I cut off the top to fit that I had coffee dyed. This one is an envelope that I cut off the flap, fold that in half. So we'll do all the specialty pages first, like the... Um, I call them kind of the interactive ones, the, or the interesting pages. <laughs> so let's cut that off while we're here to so make the pocket. So this is glassine bag, but you can use any type of paper bag as well. And I'm just going to cut off the edge so that there's pockets on both edges. Here is one of the other envelopes with a window. So all I do is just cut off the top and fold it in half. Here is an, no wait, what is it? A photo album pocket page. So I just fold that one in half. Here are some other doilies. So I've got a small one here that doesn't need to be cut down. Then we've got this one that will need to be cut down so I will just fold it in half and then cut off just that top bit there like that all right so those are my kind of interesting pages then I've got these ones here so that come came from a notebook just you know picked up from the op shop and pulled out all the pages fold them in half and this just gives you a different look when you turn the page so that they're not all the same size. So I've got those ones. Uh, then I've got a vellum page. Again, this is one of the interesting pages. So all I do with these ones, you know how I do this. If you've followed along with other journals in the Make a Junk Journal With Me series, I just find the middle fold. In this case, it's not going to be, actually be the middle because we're doing a multi-signature journal. So what I'm looking for is this crease here because that's where it will sit. And then I'm folding it a little inside from that edge, hopefully so that means I won't have to cut down heaps and heaps of pages at the end when I bind it in. But if we need to do that, that's just what we do. <laughs> so once you cut off that edge piece, you then get your ruler or your paper trimmer and I just rule the top bit there so that I'm leaving a bit of a gap at the top, a bit of a gap at the bottom and a gap at the side so that all my pages will fit inside the cover. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but yeah, all right. Yep, I'm just standing up every now and then to see if I'm in frame. <laughs> All right, let's do these ones here, uh, vintage French book pages. So um, I use the seam ripper to keep them intact as double pages and I don't need to do anything to these. These are all ready to go as pages, so that's good. Let me just organize my piles off the side here. All right, now I've got my ledger paper, so I'm just going to fold these are all the rest of these are like the generic a4 size so it's all just a matter of folding it cutting off the excess and then cutting off the top now because this is a multi-signature journal we have a lot of pages to get through um, so hopefully maybe you just want to put this on in the background while you are cutting all your pages to give you some company. <laughs> it's not the most uh, interesting part of the process. But we just fold and cut, fold and cut. 
Uh, I'm sorry if I kind of go in and out of focus or anything or if I'm off camera. I can't actually see what I'm doing. When I film on my iPad, I have to raise the um, filming height. So I can't actually see what I'm doing when I sit down. But I know that if I don't move this cover, I'll at least be in frame. If I'm in focus, that's another story. So I'll just get up every now and then to check on the camera to make sure we're in frame. And I keep hitting the camera with my head too, <laughs> my iPad with my head. <laughs> but that's okay. We do what we do. <laughs> All right, so let's just... Some of them, I love them when they have the grid lines because you can just cut it down and you don't have to measure. All right. Oh, these ones are some interesting pages too because they're interactive. What I want to do with these is fold up the bottom and we are going to do some pocket pages. We will sew these to make pockets. You don't have to sew them if you don't want to. You can leave them open so you can fit bigger things in the pockets or you can use glue as well. So we're just going to sew that there, there and there. I'm going to do that off camera. So you want to do that as well. And we've got three because we've got three signatures. So I want to put one of each into the signatures. And let's do one that folds on the outside. So the pocket is on the outside. All right, one more pocket page to do. So we'll just fold it up, fold it over. And um, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm also folding it quite generously, giving it a generous margin. Um, again, just to show that this is a different size page to all the rest and create more of that interest. Yeah, sorry if the camera keeps moving. I keep bumping it with my head. <laughs> Eventually the frame will be up here the whole time. Um, okay, so now we've got our, um, our music paper. I might cut that off there. All right, because I like that skylark. There we go. And then I want to try and keep as much of the music notations visible so if I cut it there and there will that work yes I think it does that fits just fits I might just cut it off a little bit more here just to be safe all right now let's fold it this way for this one Oh my goodness, I just keep bumping the camera with my head. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you are following along, if you're enjoying the process or what stage you're up to and what materials you're using, what papers are you using for your pages? Okay, so that one might need to be cut down a little bit here. I can also tell this might need to be cut down at the end this way. But that's okay, we can do that at the end. Right, I like this one here because it's got these dancers here. So I'm just going to use this side as the first one you see. Okay. And we'll cut that there. And along here and along here. Okay, those are the music pages. So, what next? Hang on, I just want to cut this off again just to be safe. I have got the feature pages now. So, I've printed these off, and just to show you, when you print them, if you get the same one that I do, where I formatted them and you just push print. Sometimes when you do double-sided, one will be bigger than the other. I mean, if you want, you can get the individual JPEGs and format it yourself so it's exactly the same size. Um, I haven't learned that art yet. <laughs> so, so you just want to make sure you're cutting all the white bits off. I mean, if you don't mind the white bits, keep them on as well. 
but all you want to do is make sure it's all cut out fold them in half that's why I made them like this so it's super easy you just push print and then you fold it in half to get your pages and if you cut it in half to get your covers so really really hopefully quick and easy for you guys at home and I'm just going to fold all of those over and I also the way I formatted it was so that everything would work together so that this is the pair this is the pair there's not going to be anything clashing so I formatted it all for you if you'd like that is available to all my Ruby patrons if you would like that option if you just want the JPEGs they're available on my Etsy and if you just want to format it yourself you can definitely do that I like to give options <laughs> for whatever is easiest okay now we've got all of our feature pages done now all that is left are our coffee dye pages so this is going to be the most we do of these because these are going to be our blank filler pages for our writing space essentially so because i know there's going to be heaps of these i'm going to just fold them all first and it doesn't matter if they're all a bit different sizes that kind of adds to the effect of the junk journal look where all the pages are different so some might be wider or narrower than others and I love that the pages themselves are different weights of coffee dye. Some have got cool patterns in them. And that way, every time you turn the page, you're getting a different look. Okay. So this part might be the most tedious. <laughs> but I hope you're having fun doing it nevertheless. Enjoying it. I find it very therapeutic. Kind of just getting your pages together people always ask me what's my favorite part of making journals and it mine lines up chronologically my favorite is the cover my second favorite is the pages and i adore making the cover and choosing my pages and cutting them down to size and arranging them that's my favorite part <laughs> okay so I think I mentioned it in the intro video, but I'm aiming for 15 pages per signature. Yeah, every time the camera might move up a bit, it's because I've donked it with my head and pushed it forward. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> so funny. Okay, anyway. So I've probably got way too many, honestly. Um, but better to have too many than not enough because then I can always use them in a different project. So I might be, yeah, doing more pages than necessary, but you just do um, whatever you need to get 15 per signature. You don't even have to do 15 per signature. If you want, you can do... Um, 10 pages per signature, 12 pages per signature, like anything you want, really. But I just want to pack it up, pack it, pack it out <laughs> with, with a lot of pages. Because I'm all about that writing space. I suppose I could time lapse this video too, couldn't I? But I kind of like the idea of keeping this as much as possible a series done in real time so that you can see it getting made in real time and see all of the mistakes along the way and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I think I am a bit off kilter. Let me stand up for this so I know I'm in frame. All right, so you just want to cut all of these down. And let me know, if you're one of those people who watches this video to the very end, let me know in the comments. <laughs> or are you just like, yeah, I get the gist. I know what to do. And then you just end the video. I have to admit, I kind of do that too. Unless I want something in the background, 
once I get the gist, I kind of stop it and just go off and do it myself. Um, but yeah, sometimes I do feel like having something on in the background. But usually, yeah, I'll get the gist, stop it, and then continue on while I listen to a podcast in the background. Because I love my podcast, Psychology in Seattle. See, now I'm just trying to think of things to say <laughs> for the rest of this video. And if you're happy to hear me ramble. <laughs> um, yeah, Psychology in Seattle, I pretty much just listen to them any time that I'm crafting. And when I'm eating, so when I have lunch and dinner, that's when I watch a crafting video. But if I'm actually crafting, yeah, I just listen to the podcast. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much my YouTube life. <laughs> um, I save my f favorite videos to watch when I have lunch and dinner. So the only time I watch, like if I need to see a video, I'll save it for lunch and dinner. And then any other time that I um, am on YouTube, it's with the podcast because you don't actually see anything. You just hear them um because the podcast they do reaction videos as well though so for those ones yeah i will put that in the background and have it um so that i can watch it as well as do this at the same time but love them i've just gotten recently into their Ju dungeons and dragons episodes and they're like two hour episodes which is so great for crafting because it keeps me company and i learn from them and they're so hilarious i didn't think i would be into them because Dungeons and Dragons is, um, well, I don't know the game really. <laughs> and okay, let me just sit back down again and I will continue on with this, cutting these out. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, Dungeons and Dragons, I just love, it's a role playing game. So it's very character based and storytelling based. So it's just like listening to a story and it's absolutely hilarious because they make up the story themselves and they are their own characters and it's just really fun anyway I'm just going off topic I'm supposed to be talking about this journal <laughs> but uh, this 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 video series is <laughs> just gonna be a very long video series because it's such a more there's more to it in making this journal so I am completely rambling and I'm expecting no one to be watching this part so I'm just going off track talking about other things. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> if you like the ramble let me know or if you would prefer me to talk about the journal let me know. I'm just trying to think what else I can say about the journal. Um, because yeah this part is the exact same pro part of the process that we do for every other journal that we make. And I hope that you can kind of see that as well, that when you learn how to do the basic journal, you've pretty much learned all of you, all you need to know to make any other journal um, when it comes to doing the pages. It's the same principle, you fold and cut, fold and cut, choose your pages, arrange them, you're good to go. <laughs> it's just maybe learning the techniques of how to do different covers. So coming up, yes, we will be doing a little golden book journal where we make our own spine, um, and we will be doing a chipboard cover journal. We'll be doing some journals made out of biscuit boxes and soup boxes eventually. If you have any other ideas of journals you would like to see me make for these Make a Junk Journal With Me series, let me know. Happy to take requests. All of these are pretty much requests. I was going to do them anyway, but people were requesting them as well. Um, but I think this is the last one we'll do for this year. And then come next year, we'll do some of the more advanced journals like the Little Golden Book and Chipboard. Okay. Getting through it. <laughs> How long is this video? It's going to be a very long video. It's going to take forever to upload, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, and the reason why I keep doing this, it is kind of labor intensive and quite, quite, I don't know, a chore to do these videos and do this series. But at some point, you know, I was like, do I continue doing these? It's a lot of work and 
Um, but then uh, I just, when I hear you guys say that you made the same journal or that this helped you to make your very first journal, um, it makes me go, oh, it's worth it. And um, it makes me so excited to be able to make the same journal with you guys and to know that maybe I played a little small part in helping you to make your first journal or your first style, like journal in a particular style. Um, and even if it helps one person, I think, well, let's put in the effort and do it <laughs> for that person. Because I've been helped so much by fellow journal makers who put in the time and effort to make these videos. And I've learned how to make journals through them, through them and their videos. So if I can give back and do this as well, then, you know, that's my little part I can play as well. So, yeah. Um, but everyone out there has such amazing tutorials. By no means, like I always want to reiterate, like mine aren't the best. Uh, there's probably way better ways to do all of these things. Better techniques, better tools. Um, but for those who just want to see how I do it, or, or you like what I do, this is the behind the scenes look at how I do it. <laughs> But if you find a different way to do it that works better for you, go ahead and do that for sure. It's all about finding what works for you. And we will all have different things that work for us. So, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so almost done. Just cutting off the tops of these pages. And in the next video, we will arrange our three signatures. And following that video, we will start laying out all of our ephemera. And I will show you what you will need for that. So if you're wanting to follow along, I'm going to be using the all the different size journal cards from the collage kits, the small, medium and large. We'll also be using the tag kits from my Etsy. And we'll also be using the vintage French seed packets and vintage French um what's I'm gonna call it envelopes <laughs> oh I've just realized something I haven't cut out the um, vintage French receipts uh, that's because I had to go and print them and they're in a different pile so let me just grab those all right well there's all my um <laughs> mind blank coffee dye paper and I just keep them in their piles because I want one of each and everything. Okay, so let's just arrange, arrange, arrange. Here they are. There we go. So let me just grab the receipts too. You want to cut all this out. I'll cut all this out off camera as well. So it's ready to go when we start filming again. Sorry, I just hit the iPad with my head again. Look at that. Oh, see, <laughs> this is terrible. Um, so yeah, I'm actually going to cut these off camera. You've seen me do this for the boho journal. I will just cut them out and all I will do is fold them in half. Some of them might be a bit too wide for this cover and I will just have to cut off a little bit extra. But I will come back in the next video and show you those all cut out and folded as well. I hope that was helpful. I'm so sorry if I hit the iPad so many times that it kind of kept moving, 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 and I got off frame. But we're doing the best we can with what we've got. <laughs> and I hope that you are having fun making your own journal. And I will see you guys in the next video. You are all precious gems. Thank you for being you. You bring light and goodness and beauty to those around you by being you. So shine bright out there. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.